Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sam House, and I'm your moderator for the Cheyenne VA Telephone Town Hall this evening. In the room here in Cheyenne, we have a number of experts ready to talk about our COVID vaccine pro uh, vaccination program and our scheduling programs. I want to lay out how we're going to conduct this meeting this evening. Here in a few minutes, I'll turn the microphone over to Mr. Paul Roberts, our medical center director, who will provide us with a few facility updates. Following Mr. Roberts' remarks, I'll turn it over to Mr. Eric Kurtz, our emergency manager, who will discuss how we are doing on vaccinations and provide you with some of the things that we have learned over the past few weeks, as well as how, to, how you can help us serve our veterans. Following Mr. Kurtz, nurse Tracy Brayman, one of our nurse practitioners, will give us some updates from our nursing service and how our scheduling program works. And finally, last but not least, we will hear from Mr. Colton Isley, who will talk about our pharmacy programs associated with the COVID vaccine, as well as briefly discuss allergies and health uh, considerations. Following Colton, we will take questions from our callers. If you're interested in asking a question, please press star three on your phone and you will be put in our queue and we will try to get it to as many callers as we can. With that, I'll turn the microphone over to Mr. Roberts. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening and uh, spending time with us uh, to uh, ask questions uh, or give us your thoughts about the uh, vaccination program to date. Uh, I'll be very brief so that it gives you the maximum amount of time to, to dial in and ask questions. Just want to let you know, since the last time we had a virtual call like this it was about six weeks ago, uh, since then we uh, received our first shipment of vaccine three days before Christmas, and we started vaccinating immediately that day, and we have been doing so ever since. Uh, I'm going to leave it to some other folks to, to go over how many we've done and so forth and uh, what the future looks like. But uh, uh, we've, we've uh, gotten off to a good start and we are executing uh, to plan. The only thing we're waiting for, quite frankly, is more vaccine. Uh, if I can hit one major message, that's it. We're just uh, in receipt mode for more vaccine. And the more we can get, the more we can shoot. So with that, I'll turn it over to the uh, open callers and we'll take questions and uh, thank you once again. And can we, uh, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Can we have Mr. Kurtz? Oh uh, yeah, hey. Okay. Thanks boss. Hey, um, I'm the emergency manager here, also your incident commander, um, kind of doing the planning and, and coordination, if you will, for the vaccines. Um, and and just to echo what Mr. Robertson said, you know, the biggest thing that is is holding us back right now is the amount of vaccines that we're getting in. We do have plans in place to to expand as we do start getting more vaccines in, and we will do that just as soon as we get it in. Right now, uh, everything we're receiving, we are pushing to our veterans. That's just the the way it works. Uh, everything that we get in, we're pushing out. And as we get more in, we'll push it, push more out. We have uh, had a few hiccups along the way, some some lessons learned that that we have have worked through, but uh, that should have been completely transparent to our veterans and uh, just really process improvement on our part. With that, uh, turn it right back over to you, Sam. All right, thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Uh, Nurse Brayman. Um, so, just from a, a nursing service um, perspective. We're working diligently with the business line, um, trying to get as many veterans scheduled as we can, um, running clinics here in Cheyenne as well as um, a clinic in Loveland. We're working on some Saturday clinics to accommodate our veterans who cannot make it during the week. Um, we've got multiple nurses um, helping give our vaccinations. And um, as far as the process goes, once you're called and scheduled, um, we ask that you arrive only 10 minutes before your vaccine um, to help us maintain our social distancing protocols as we want to keep everyone safe as, as we try and get our veterans vaccinated. Um, you will then be brought back to a room, asked a few questions. There's a screening questionnaire. And basically, from our perspective, there's one contraindication to um, people getting the uh, Moderna vaccine, which we have gotten. 
and that's a severe allergic reaction to any vaccine or any injectable medication in your lifetime. And there's a lot of, of reasons behind that, but that's the one thing that would preclude you from getting our Moderna vaccine. Other allergic reactions, we are, we are still vaccinating. So if you've had an allergic reaction to bees or to shellfish, we'll absolutely still vaccinate you. Um, there's always the questions of how are, we, how are we scheduling people, how are we getting them in? And we are trying to follow the CDC's guidelines on who to vaccinate when. And as uh, Mr. Kurtz has said before, our limiting factor is the number of vaccines. As we get more vaccines, we will get more vaccines out to our veterans. Thank you very much, Nurse Bremen. And next, uh, Mr. Isley. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, an honor to get to represent pharmacy for our facility. Uh, it's been an exciting time. Uh, so pharmacy's role with the rollout of this uh, really revolves around receiving. At this time, we've gotten 3,400, 3,400 doses, and that includes 2,400 first doses and 1,000 second doses. And since this is a two-dose series, that, that's the reason for the split. And at this time, we've administered 1,720 of those doses. So we feel we're making excellent progress. Uh, other things pharmacy is responsible for is storage. Uh, there's some unique storage requirements for this vaccine, as many people may have already heard. Um, we also prep and handle the, the doses to give to nursing. And then we're also kind of an information and update source. We try to keep the facility and the staff updated on, you know, what's coming out with the vaccines and what's going on with safety data. I can say that in general, the vaccines overall and Moderna included in that have been uh, very well tolerated. There's always going to be a few side effects to vaccines, the very common things, headaches, the sore arm. We are seeing those, um, but in general, they're being well tolerated and we're seeing numbers similar to side effects that uh, were experienced in the clinical studies. So we're very happy on that. So. Thank you very much, Mr. Isley. And thank you all for being here and thank you to our veterans who dialed in. We currently have about 2,500 people that are dialed in right now. So that's pretty exciting. Again, if you have a question that you would like to ask, please press star three on your phone and you will be placed into our question asking queue. At this time, we would like to take a quick poll from our veterans regarding My Healthy Vet. For those who don't know, My Healthy Vet is a quick way to communicate with your VA care team, order prescriptions, and have access to your records through the computer. The way this will work is that I will ask a question and I will give you choices for you to enter on your touchtone phone. So the question is, do you use the computer-based website, My Healthy Vet, to communicate with your primary care team? Press 1 for yes. Press 2 if you would like more information or assistance about My Healthy Vet. And press 3 if you are not interested at this time. Again, the question is, do you use the computer-based program site, My Healthy Vet, to communicate with your primary care team? Press 1 for yes. Press 2 for more information and assistance, or press 3 if you are not interested. All right, we will re reveal the results of the, the poll before we end tonight's meeting. Again, if you have questions that you would like to ask our team, please press star 3 to be added to our queue. With that, let's take our first caller. Our first caller is Alan, and you have a question about spinal cord issues. Um, Alan, you're live. Go ahead. Hi, this is Alan. Uh, I'm uh, for my son. I'm calling. He's 100% spinal cord disabled. That wonder where he's going to fall into the protocol of the vaccination rollout. I I guess I can take that if you want. Um, so. Anybody that's in a spinal cord treatment center being inpatient has, has been uh, is in the 1A category, which would be the same as what our our uh, uh, community living center's uh, nursing home is. And by the way, this is Eric Kurtz. I'm sorry, sir. Um, for any of the outpatients, that actually is based on their age. Uh, is is really what it may what it amounts to, and then any underlying comorbidities, they have not 
considered anybody that's outpatient spinal cord injury to to be up above in the in the queue, uh, and that's just information that we got straight from uh, Health and Human Services as well as from the CDC. Uh, hopefully, that answers your question. Obviously, if you do have concerns, uh, and please reach out to the primary caregiver of your son and discuss it with them and they might be able to get you moved up in, in the queue based on the underlying comorbidities, sir. All right, thank you very much. And next we have David, who is asking about the order of vaccination. David, you're live. Okay, hi, this is a Dave. So uh, kind of just to piggyback on that young man's uh, question or that father's question about his son. So. My question, part of it was answered because you guys said that you guys have already are starting to vaccinate our veteran brothers and sisters that are in the nursing homes and things of that nature, correct? Um, this is Tracy Brayman, and yes, we have um, already started doing our long-term care residents um, along with the staff that take care of those veterans. And then we are following um, the CDC's recommendations. The The first group of veterans that we are Currently vaccinating are those who are 70 years old and older and frontline essential workers. So those examples of those are police, um, correctional officers, food and agricultural workers, um, emergency medical technicians, and um, the U.S. Postal Service. The next category is those who are 65 and older and those who have certain comorbid medical conditions. Those conditions include things like type 2 diabetes, um, morbid obesity, um, COPD, uh, certain cancers, and other immunocompromised disorders. Once that section, um, we vaccinate that, then it's um, 50 and older, and then on, from, on down from there. All right. Thank you very much for that question. A very similar question from Hollis. Hollis, you're live. Yeah, so well, my question was just answered. Uh, my name's Hollis Taylor. I'm uh, 68 years old. I live in uh, Greeley, Colorado, a part of Will County. And my wife is 70, and she got her first uh, vaccination, the, Vi the Pfizer uh, biotech vaccination the other day, and I went with her. And uh, they said, no, no, you can't get yours. Uh, you're 68. So it's it sort of funny and laughing about it, but they said I have to wait till my question was really just answered. Uh, the VA or the counties are not giving vaccination to people 68 years of, of age or older. Now, my wife had her vaccination, and she gets her second vaccination in, in, in a few days. Uh, that, and I'm just wondering, um, is there any going to be any change to that? Or will they, one person has been vaccinated in the house, and the other person would just have to, to wait until their turn comes around for the vaccination? So this is Tracy Brayman again, and per CDC's recommendations, unfortunately, we kind of do have to vaccinate based on those guidelines. You know, there are always exceptions to every rule, but um, a lot of people will run into the situation that you're in where somebody in their household is older, meets the first group criteria but the other person doesn't meet um, the criteria and has to wait a little longer to get that vaccine. All right, next we've got Randall, and you're wondering about, uh, you've got a travel question. Uh, Randall, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I, I'm 101 miles away from Cheyenne, so I thought maybe my shuttle van would take me up there, but no, I already had my appointment set up for Monday. And guess what? They don't run a shuttle van on Monday. So <laughs> so anyway, uh, I have to drive up there by myself. Am I going to be required to sit uh, at the VA hospital there for like 15, 20 minutes before I can be able to go home? Um, this is Tracy Brayman again. And yes, just um, for safety reasons, depending on your previous health history, there will be a 15 to 30 minute wait where you'll be monitored for um, any type of reaction, and then you will be allowed to drive home. There will be no restrictions on driving or anything after that. 
And just to follow up on that too, we have two different uh, transportation programs at the Cheyenne VA. One is through DAV and the other one is through Veterans Transportation System. In order to make arrangements through the Veterans Transportation System, please dial 307-778-7550, press 8, and then press 3. Again, that phone number is 307-778-7550, press 8, and then press 3. The Veterans Transportation System will actually come and pick you up um, at, your, at, your, at your home or a, a centralized location. All right, next we have Richard. Richard has a question about his first, uh, first shot. Richard, you're on. Thank you. I, this is uh, about availability that you guys were talking about a moment ago. I had a, the first shot uh, on the 9th of January and I'm scheduled for the second shot on the 6th of February. And I wonder if there's any concern or should I be concerned about the availability of the vaccine for the second shot? Hi, Richard, this is Colton from the pharmacy. That's an excellent question. No, you do not need to be concerned. Um, we are specifically getting second dose shipments to set aside to ensure people are gonna be able to get that second dose based on getting their first dose. Uh, CDC set it up this way from the beginning, which was very smart. Uh, things may change going forward, but at this time, if you've gotten a first dose, we have the second dose. All right. Next, we have Margaret. Margaret has a question about the women's clinic. Margaret? Yes. Um, I tried setting up an appointment about a week ago, and... I contacted the VA, and I had no response. I've called today, and I'm hoping for better. Why does it take so long to get response from them? This is Tracy Freeman. Are you referring to the COVID vaccination or just a, a routine regular appointment or an acute illness? Um, oh, she's disconnected. Oh. Um, Ma'am, what I'm going to recommend is that you give me a call at my office, and I will try and connect you directly to the women's clinic. My direct line phone number is 307-778-7523. Next, we have Charles. Um, Charles, you're on. Hello. Yes, I, ha I have had... Uh a myriad of health issues. I'm a senior vet and I had temporal low bone tumor removal a couple times and, and other issues. And I suffer severe migraines. I'm wondering if the side of what the side effects are and if it's going to affect and make my migraines even worse. Hey, Charles, it's Colton from pharmacy again. That's a good question. Um, headaches are a common side effect with uh, all the vaccines available right now. It's not uncommon with vaccines in general. Um, no, I, I don't think a history of that means you shouldn't get it. Um, yes, you could get a headache from it, but I think the bigger issue would be um, not protecting yourself against a COVID infection. I think with your health history and some of these other things, um, that's more concerning to me and a reason to, to definitely consider the vaccine. And you had a number two question there too. Yeah, um, he's been, he's not live anymore, right. but I, I was going to make sure that we, you know, his second question was, do I still have to wear my mask after the vaccine? Oh, good question. Yeah, with the social distancing and masking. Uh, yes, uh, we're going to recommend that for a while. And that's, again, that's CDC's recommendation and, and just epidemiology and infection experts. And the reason for that is until more people are vaccinated, and you know we don't know if that's going to be 70, 80 percent of the population. Um, we do need to continue to protect ourselves. At this time, we don't know if the vaccine is is great at preventing transmission. We know it protects you from getting it, but it, we don't know if um, you can't still transmit, uh, give it to someone else. Um, hopefully, with more data and more time, we will see what we want to see, and that'll be the case. But yes, continue to mask, continue to social distance. That'll be part of it. All right, next we have Dennis. 
Dennis is a Vietnam vet. Thank you very much for your service. Dennis, you're on. You're on. Yes, I'm 73, and I just I I signed up for uh, my healthy vet today, and I had I I was designated advanced, and when I tried to upgrade to premium, I had struggled with that. So there's a number I can call about that. But my question is, uh, when would I be a, a uh, able to get my first shot. So this is Tracy Brayman, and um, for our VA, our current time frame for vaccinating our veterans who are 75 and older is now, but the 65 to 75 will start on um, the first week in February. And Dennis, we've got your contact information. We will have our My Healthy Vet coordinator reach out to you. Next, we have Don. Don is wondering uh, about vaccines in Fort Collins. Uh, Don, you're live. Yes, thank you for taking my call. I'm just really questioning and wondering uh, what the protocols are for uh, vaccinations at the Fort Collins Clinic, if any. Um, and if so, how do you get on the list, et cetera? Thank you. Don, this is Colton. I can at least address the the shipment part, part of that. Um, the vaccine we have, the Moderna vaccine, uh, requires some pretty uh, strict storage, handling, and transport uh, uh, requirements. At this time, we, we have been able to move over to Loveland. Um, we are able to do it through their clinic because of some security things and storage requirements. Uh, my recommendation would be getting set up to have it done at Loveland, and your PAC team should be able to assist you in taking care of that. All right, next we have Willard, um, uh, one of our many snowbirds down in Arizona. Uh, Willard, you're on. Thank you for taking the call this afternoon. I uh, have a question. I'm down here in Southern Arizona for three months. Uh, is it possible for me to get a shot through this system down here or am I going to have to wait till I get home and come back up to Cheyenne? Hi, Willard. This is Sam again. And so what we have found out is that, and, and my father is actually down in, in Arizona as well. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to go in to the uh, nearest VA, and you will need to register with them. They will assign you a primary care provider, and at that point, they will make you eligible for the vaccine there. So that is your best bet. Unfortunately, our traveling veterans coordinators have not been able to uh, assist our veterans on that um, at this time. So, and I, th this is exactly what I told my father, go in, register, get on their list. And then when you, uh, when you decide to come north, you can go ahead and, and bring your records back into your primary facility. Next, we have Gordon. Gordon, uh, you have an allergy, so go ahead and, go ahead and ask a question. Uh, yes, sir. So um, I have an allergy to penicillin, um, and so the question is, is, will I be able to take the COVID vaccine because of that? Sir, this is Tracy Brayman. Was your allergy to oral or a pill of penicillin, or was it to a shot of penicillin or penicillin that you got in an IV while you were in the hospital? And that is a very good question, which I cannot answer. I was like seven years old, um, and the way it was explained to me by my mother was uh, my father was an Army veteran also, and we were living in Germany, and she says that they overdosed me on penicillin. So likely you were given an injectable form of penicillin. I can't say that for sure, um, but with injectable penicillin, you would not be eligible for the vaccine. Um, if it was an oral form, then yes, you would. So it's kind of a hard call, um, maybe something you should uh, discuss with your your primary care provider, but if it was injectable, we want to err on the side of caution, um, and there is a contraindication with that. 
All right. Next, we have Diana. Diana, you've got a great question for here in Wyoming and northern Colorado. Di Diana, go ahead and ask your question. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm coming up from Pueblo, and I have a vaccine appointment on the 3rd of February. I'm 70 years old. My question is, is because we don't know about the weather, and if there should be a blizzard in Cheyenne, which, you know, they shut the gates on you, what do you have any leeway as for the days between, um, you know, because it's 28 days with the Moderna for your second vaccine? Is there like two or three days that you're okay to take it again on your second dose? Um, I'm I'm really concerned about that. Hey, thank you, ma'am. Uh, this is Eric Kurtz, uh, and, and a great question for first and second doses even. For the second dose, uh, they they are giving us a four day window left and right, so uh, really 24 to 32 days. Uh, we try to hit that right on the numbers at the 28, just because it makes planning purposes a lot easier. However, if, if there is a a storm coming, um, we we will definitely be reaching out to those people that are the first shot and the second shot, <coughs> asking if we can move them up. Or, or move them over to the right a little bit more so that we can make sure that, that we uh, get everybody their first dose as well as their second dose. And we do have uh, plenty of leeway right now, especially with the vaccine that we're getting in to be able to do that. So thank you. All right, next we have George, and you've got a great question about where, where and when. All right, George, you're on. All right, so um, I tell you what, we'll just go ahead and read the question. Uh, George, where are they doing vaccines at, and will it be at multiple sites? So right now, this I'm sorry, this is Tracy Brayman. Right now we are doing vaccines um, at the main hospital campus in Cheyenne, and then we are doing one day a week in Loveland um, at this point. So. Right now, with the, the Moderna vaccine, that's, that's where we're doing um, injections. All right. Next, we have Jerry, who's got a great scheduling question. Jerry. Yeah, so thanks for taking my call. Uh, I tried to schedule an appointment uh, twice in one day and got down to where I was number one caller, and then they said the system was busy, and I, they said call back. And that was after waiting for 40 minutes. Secondarily, I need to know I'm a veteran and I've got been in for my hearing aids and I've got that all taken care of, but I'm not in the system, I don't believe, as a general care. Do I need to be a part of the general care program? Hey, sir, this is Ken Bush, Chief of the Business Office. You just have to be enrolled in our system. You don't have to be assigned a primary care team or anything like that. Uh, we have your information down, and we'll have someone reach out to you and uh, help schedule the uh, vaccine for you. Um, that's all we really need right now. Uh, the phones have been um, overrun with phone calls. We're used to getting about 1,000 phone calls a week, and we're over 5,000 right now. So it's just overwhelming the phone system. So uh, we just ask that you be patient, um, and if it's taking too long, just call back another time. Uh, but we will get back with whoever we get a hold of uh, if you can leave your information. Sam, would you mind communicating about secure messaging? Oh, yes. Um, and to add on to that, if you are on My Healthy Vet, we would ask that you um, please use My Healthy Vet. That is, that has really saved our bacon um, this last this last couple of weeks as far as getting people scheduled. If you're not um, on my Healthy Vet and would like some help, please give us a call and we'd be more than happy to help you. Um, again, my direct line phone number is 307-778-7523. All right, next we have Dan. Dan, I understand uh, you've got a question about when. Yeah, yes, I was wondering, um, we're, I'm getting my vaccination next Wednesday the first one, and uh, for the second one, it it sounded like in the literature and other things that I've read that you'll be bringing 
the vaccinations to places like Loveland, where I live, or Fort Collins, or some of the other uh, outlying uh, clinics. Is that going to be, would it be possible to, when I am there for the first uh, vaccination, that I could make arrangements uh, if, if you're going to be bringing it this direction for the second? A great question, sir. Yeah, that, uh, great question all, all the way around. And, and I guess to, to, to answer the direct question, we ask that, that the veterans get their, their second dose where they got their first dose. And, and the reason for that, Moderna comes in a 10-dose ten, ten vial. And the minute that you puncture that vial, you've got six hours to use all 10 doses. And the last thing we want to do is waste any of those doses. So um, we, we would love to try to make arrangements, but unfortunately that just logistically is, is impossible right now. Um, one really quick thing, since we're talking about out to clinics, we do have plans in place to try to get the, the vaccine to run clinics out at the Sydney uh, clinic as well as out at the, the Rollins clinic for our our veterans that are, are quite a ways away from the, the Cheyenne VA. And, and just as soon as our supply and logistics chain, like everybody knows, uh, which is, is worrisome at, at the best of times, solidifies, and we're able to get the, the vaccine in, we will definitely be running those. All right, next we have Wayne. Wayne, you have a great question about uh, being tested. So Wayne, go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, two days after Christmas, we uh, had heard we were uh, exposed, so we went out and got tested, and we come back positive. We've not had any temperature or anything. We just had a little sinus uh, drainage. Uh, we're on a vitamin D regimen for the last two years, and I wanted to know if we had to wait 90 days or what have you before we could even... Uh, see about getting the, the shot or if sure. we would just wait until the uh, VA contacts us? Sir, that's a very good question. This is Tracy Brayman. There is no specific time frame as to when you can get the shot. The only um, recommendations by both the CDC and Moderna are that you wait till you are no longer having any symptoms of COVID. You do not have to wait 90 days. All right. Thank you very much. Next, we've got Lyle. Lyle, you have a question about the second dose. You're live. Yes. Uh, my wife and I had our first uh, injection last week and scheduled for Je February 8th for the second. And the question is, has there been any uh, report of the effectiveness of the two doses from the pharmaceutical companies that did the testing that uh, how effective uh, has the vaccine been to those that have received it? Hey Lyle, this is Colton again from Pharmacy. That's a good question. Um, outside of what the drug companies have published from their studies, uh, we don't have anything else. But from the studies, we had really good data. After that second dose, Moderna provided uh, efficacy uh, around 94%. Um, and just building on that one thing I remind everybody of, that's a great number, but no vaccine ever developed is 100%. No treatment is ever 100%. Um, but 94% is a, is a very good number. We'll know more with time and, and what this does in the real world, um, but we don't have any reason to believe, uh, you know, the 94% is, isn't a good report. All right. Thank you very much for that great question. Next, we've got Pete. Pete has a great question about being transferred. Uh, Pete, you're live. Yes, thank you for taking my call. Uh, my wife is in a compromised position because of her previous cancer. I don't get to go in, I'm 73, and I don't get to go in until uh, March 2nd, and then the second one, I think, is March 28th. So I was wondering if there was any chance of maybe uh, transferring down to the Loveland Clinic or, uh, you know, just trying to, because we don't get to go anywhere with that 
the position she's in. And second, I was wondering, if, since I'm 100%, does she qualify to get it through the VA? Uh, great, great question, sir. So, uh, as far as where you're at in the in the queue, uh, you're you're in a better position, I think, than you would probably be if you were at the Loveland Clinic or if you tried to transfer your your stuff to the Loveland Clinic. Um, again, I mean, as as we get more vaccine, we'll be moving people up in the in the lists. So, uh, hopefully, we can get you moved up there. I, and I I realize hope don't float, but that that's the best answer I've got for you on that. As far as life. Um, Right now, the, what the, the VA is doing is they're, they're authorizing us to vaccinate uh, primary and secondary caregivers. Now, those are ones that are actually registered in our system as a primary or a secondary caregiver of a veteran. So if your wife is not registered as a primary or secondary caregiver uh, for you, then, then unfortunately, no, right now, um, we, we can't give that, that vaccine to her. And, uh, the majority of us in this room are, are in the exact same boat that you're in, sir. And if I could just add on to that. So right now, if you wanted to transfer down to Loveland, it would actually be a longer wait than what, what it would be up here in Cheyenne. Additionally, what I've recommended to many of our veterans is take a look at what is available in the community. Hopefully, um, if you get your name on some of the other lists in the community, you might be able to get your vaccine faster. If that happens, please call us to cancel your appointment. Next, we have Lorna. Lorna, you have a great question about caregiver? Yes, I recently became the caregiver of my father. He's 85 years old. He has a lot of comorbidities, hypertensive, CHD, vascular dementia, cancer, anemia, blah, 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 a whole lot. So I'm concerned uh, about... Uh, him getting the vaccine, which he is scheduled for at the Aurora campus. And I thought that they said it would be the Pfizer vaccine. So I'm concerned about comorbidities with, and, and that vaccine. And as his caretaker, I have concerned about myself not being vaccinated. Here's the difference. This is Colton from Pharmacy. It's a good question. So at Aurora, um, it sounds like that'll be through Denver VA, and they did get Pfizer. Um, it works very, very similar to Moderna. They're both mRNA vaccines, so um, not too concerned with that part of it. Um, I kind of mentioned this earlier. I think, I think with the comorbidities and all the other health issues, um, I'm more concerned with a COVID infection with all those versus some of the side effects we would see with the vaccine. Um, and yes, there are side effects, uh, sore arm, headaches, fever. And, you know, sometimes these, these can be severe. But, but again, with everything else, I'm more concerned with what a COVID infection could, could bring. And Lorna, just to follow on that, if, if you are the registered caregiver for your father, then, then yes, uh, you are authorized to get the vaccine through the VA. Um, obviously, just what Colton said, uh, for your father, same side effects for you. Uh, However, uh, I would definitely get a hold of the Aurora uh, campus where your, your father does get it, is getting his vaccine and let them know that you are his caregiver and let them know when your father is scheduled to come in. And uh, I know here in Cheyenne, we are doing everything we possibly can to make sure that the, the veteran and the caregiver will get the vaccine at the same time. Uh, if the veteran's already got the vaccine, we'll get the caregiver just as quick as we can. All right, next we have Mary Beth. Uh, Mary Beth, you're live. Hi, thanks for taking the call. I've got a three-part question about the vaccine itself. Um, number one, does the vaccine provide immunity or does it just lessen the symptoms? Um, number two, uh, is it, um, are you still capable of passing the virus to someone else or transmitting? the virus to someone else after you get it? And number three, is the Moderna vaccine made from aborted babies? This is Colton. Uh, good questions. I, I can definitely touch on those. Um, so for immunity, the, the vaccine provides 94% efficacy in preventing catching COVID. So take that for what it means for immunity. Yes, essentially it provides immunity. 
As for spread, we don't know. Um, Transmission is a little bit different. Until we see more real world um, data, we don't know if it actually prevents the, the spread amongst each other. There is some data that's encouraging coming out of one of the studies from AstraZeneca who's working on a vaccine. Um, it's limited, but it does seem to indicate that there is a decreased transmission when you get the vaccine, which is good. As for the ingredients, um, no to, to, to the ingredient you asked specifically. Um, it contains the mRNA component of uh, the COVID uh, virus, which is just, it, it, that's what you code against to create the antibodies. It contains a lipid nanoparticle, and basically this is uh, a, a couple different types of fats, um, and this is what actually closes in the mRNA to protect it. There's PEG, DMG, cholesterol, and some other really long, complicated names that are just fat. Uh, there's some buffers in it. Uh, these are basically salts, acetic acid, sodium. Essentially, these help prevent uh, causing damage to the tissue. They, they balance it out so it doesn't cause any damage to the tissue around it. It has some sterile water, and it also has some sucrose, which is a sugar. There are no cell lines. There are no preservatives. There's no animal or human tissue in the vaccine. Excellent question. All right. Next, we have Randy. Randy, you're live. Uh, hi. Uh, my question was, I'm, I'm just a year and a half out of being 65, and at 10%, you know, I know uh, things follow in, in age and all that, but I have lung issues, and uh, I, I'm being treated in Aurora. I'm not a Cheyenne, but I'm being treated in Aurora by lung specialist in Aurora, and uh, I uh, am on uh, microphenolate, and I was wondering if the if uh, there's any risk issues there. And uh, my second question was, uh, uh, I'm I'm getting calls, and uh, I had knee replacement, so it takes me a couple of minutes sometimes to get to the phone. And before I can pick the phone up, if it rings like three or four times, they hang up. And so, I, you know, I'm, I know somebody's calling me trying to schedule a uh, a uh, lung appointment, I tried to call back and left a message and then wait two days and they call again and of course I don't have my phone by me so by the time I get the phone I get hung up again. So I'm having issues with getting appointments made. Randy, that's a great question. I'll answer the first part of it um with your age and your underlying um issues you would likely fall into the second category, which um, we will start vaccinating that uh, first week in February. Um, and then I will let um, one of our other um, panel members uh, answer the second part of your question. So this is Ken Bush, Chief of the Business Office. Uh, not sure how we can help with you getting to your phone, but if uh, you don't hear anything and you're expecting a phone call, please feel free to reach out to that clinic using our phone tree, uh, and you should be able to get directly into the clinic, especially if it's a specialty clinic. All right, next we have Richard, and got a great question about Riverton VA that I may be able to answer unless somebody else has a better answer. Richard, you're live. Uh, thank you for uh, putting me on the phone today. Uh, I uh, retired from F.E. Warren Air Force Base, and I used uh, Cheyenne VA constantly all the time. Uh, I actually uh, became um, wearing braces after I left the, um, the service. So, uh, but I deal with that with uh, Dunn out of Loveland. But I, here's my question. Since I'm down here in Riverton, when do the people of Riverton uh, get their allotment of the shots at the VA? I, I realized I, at the, when I first got here, I wasn't affiliated with this VA, but I didn't know that my credit card would go from coast to coast, Mexico to Canada, but my VA card only went just to Cheyenne. I didn't know it didn't uh, cover me down here in Riverton VA Hospital. I didn't know I had to get a, a primary caretaker to take care of me here, but now I know all this stuff, I think. But my question is, since I'm down here, do I still have to travel to Cheyenne? 
All right, Richard, I tell you what, um, in terms of, of Riverton VA, Riverton VA actually falls under the Sheridan VA. So the best thing to do would be to register under the Sheridan VA. Now, in terms of what they're doing and how they're distributing the vaccine is quite a bit different than what, what we are doing here at the Cheyenne VA. So our best bet right now is take a look at what is available in the community. If that's what you're, you choose to do, of course, you could always come back to, to the Cheyenne VA. Of course, we know how the roads are, especially along I-80. So take a look at what is available in, um, in Sweetwater County, and they should be able to tell you when the most, um, the, the soonest you'd be able to get vaccinated. Next, we'll go to Bill. Yes. Uh, uh, I live here in Loveland, and uh, um, I, was, I was under the impression and you've kind of verified that with your conversations today, that once a week the, they will be giving the vaccine here in Loveland now. And I was just wondering, what day of the week would that be, or is that variable from week to week? And uh, uh, I just uh, trying to get kind of an idea. I've I've tried to apply with the city of Loveland as, for the vaccine as well as the VA. And I'm just kind of in limbo for for the moment as to when I'll be able to get it and where and at what time. Hey, Bill, this is Colton. Um, we're doing Loveland Clinic on Thursdays. Um, as the director said at the beginning of this, one of our biggest limitations right now is supply. If that can start to ramp up, we're hoping to do clinic on uh, maybe a Saturday once a month also in Loveland. All right, and I will I will add on to that. Right now, the soonest available, it looks like, is April 22nd in Loveland, whereas soonest available up in Cheyenne is March 23rd. All right, uh, Ronald. Yes, um, this is uh, Ron Ray from um, Rush, Colorado. I'm over 100 miles from um, the... Uh, Cheyenne Hospital, and I have been assigned a community care doctor, but my community care team down here in Brest tells me they don't have a clue as to when they will be able to set up vaccination. So I am hearing now on the broadcast you are going to start uh, in Loveland. Should I try to make an appointment in Loveland or just wait for my community care? Hello? Yep, nope, we're, we're kind of looking here. So, sir, my recommendation would be to, you, you can certainly call to find out when, the, when you can get in at Loveland. Um, obviously, that's a little bit closer. Um, my recommendation would be to, to sign up for both and then cancel the one that, um, cancel the one that is, is later. So if you get an appointment, for example, in April in Loveland, but you're able to get it locally in, uh, in Brush um, a lot sooner, which I would imagine you probably would, um, then be sure to contact us to cancel your appointment in Loveland. And likewise, if it's the other way around. All right, next we have April. April, you're live. Yes, thank you for taking my question. Absolutely. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, my first question, uh, I have two questions. My first question is, uh, is it a contraindication if the uh, vaccines, if it is an it is a, um, RNA uh, vaccine for somebody that has active cancer? Hey, April, this is Colton again from Pharmacy. Uh, although the data is limited, um, no, it is not a contraindication. Um, and again, I, I've said this a couple times, I, I'm more concerned with what could happen with a COVID infection than, than what the vaccine uh, could cause. 
Okay, and then my second question would be scheduling. Uh, right now, it's uh, it took us four months to get my husband scheduled just to come into the regular doctor. So, um, how can we get scheduled for the vaccines and the second dose um, to make sure we get that done? So, April, um, we've got your information, and we will add you to. Um, yeah, so I've got your contact information. What we'll do is we will reach out and add you to our call-up list to get you scheduled. Um, right now, when you schedule for your first shot, you're automatically scheduled for your second shot, so that's not an issue. And as for a supply standpoint, again, we're, we're setting aside that second dose uh, specifically, so people who get their first one will get their second one. All right. Next, we have Mark. Oh, Peggy. Yes, my question is about lot numbers. Are you guys going to be able to trace these lot numbers? Because the reason I asked was I, I was uh, doing the Gulf War. I received seven different shots at the same time. And I thought it was a direct result of my diabetes. So I've been fighting it for almost 20 years now. But anyway, I, I was looking at the, uh, the last thing they told me was, you find the lot number or the vials that were issued. And so I just wanted to know and let people know that if they get sick later, they can always trace it back to the lot number that they receive because every, every vial ain't the same. That's an excellent question. And, and, and I apologize that previous vaccinations maybe weren't tracked as well. I can tell you just from the pharmacy side, I've never seen an effort put forward to track something like I've seen with this. The numbers are being followed very closely. Every time we get a new batch, we have to actually report to CDC and big VA above us what we received. And then CDC tracks all of that through what they call a clinical reminder. And it's a fancy way of uh, basically tracking exactly that. The lot number, the expiration, the date you got it, everything is logged. So excellent question. And I'll just add on to that. When you get your vaccine, you will be given a card with all, the, all of this information on it. When you get that card, it is strongly recommended, regardless of where you get it, if you get it from us or from Walgreens, take a photograph of that um, card. All right, next we have Eric. Eric, you're live. Thank you very much. My question is in regards to supply and demand, and I guess it's kind of a two-part question. The first part being, what kind of uh, patient demand do we have in each of these priority groups that we're that are um, in the Cheyenne system or get the vaccine? The other side of the question is on the supply side, what does it look like in the near future as far as ramping up the amount of doses we're getting? A great question, Eric. This is Eric. Uh, in, in, re, in regards to your demand piece, uh, demand has been about what we're seeing nationally, uh, right about 70%, between 60 and 70% uh, demand. So uh, quite, a, quite a number of veterans that are, that are calling to get appointments. Uh, as far as the supply side, you know, I, I wish I had really awesome news for you, but uh, uh, just got a, a missive here this afternoon that uh, – Right now, uh, about 4.3 million doses per week is what uh, both Pfizer and Moderna are pushing out. Um, they hope to have that ramped up to 5 million doses a week uh, by the 1st of February, so another 700,000 doses of Moderna will be available. Uh, unfortunately, all of those are spoken for. Uh, so it, 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 it's looking like uh, it might be even as long as 60 days from now before we start seeing that supply start uh, tapering up. Uh, Big VA does have some plans uh, to try to try to do so, some other things uh, with the vaccine that they do have that they are allocated. So we'll just you know kind of have to wait and see how that how that works. But the supply that we do have, we are pushing out just as fast as we get it. I'll piggyback on that too. This is Colton again. Um, some good news, uh, hopefully, that helps us get through this pandemic. Um, we've got more vaccine products uh, on, on the line right now, uh, expected for soon review for the another emergency authorization. Um, there's one from Johnson and Johnson. There's one from AstraZeneca. There's one from a company called Novavax. 
And these are all companies that, that participated in the Operation Warp Speed thing to, to get more uh, more supply out there. So it's going to take time, but it, it you know it might be the light at the end of the tunnel. We'll, we'll have supply increasing through the year. Uh, hopefully, we're optimistic. Johnson and Johnson uh, get the emergency authorization here as soon as February, and we may see the same thing for AstraZeneca. So. All right. It looks like we have about time for just a few more questions. Uh, next, we'll go to Frank, um, who's got a great question with scheduling. Frank? Yes, Frank Bustos. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, I was. We called on the very first time you offered it, and then I never got around. Uh, you stopped it before you even got to me. So then the next day I called, and I don't know if they said we could be scheduled in the Cheyenne VA. And so we said, well, we wanted Loveland. And they said, oh, well, we'll contact you. So I called back, and they said, oh, no, it's full. So now we're calling again, and if we have to come to Cheyenne, we'll come to Cheyenne. Because my husband's 80 years old. He's got heart condition, hard to hear, and dementia. And I've just been uh, – nobody's called me back, and we need to get him scheduled and thank God I got a, I got online right now with you. So, shouldn't we be able to? Would we be able, or are we in the list to come up there or down here soon? Frank, we really appreciate your question. We understand your frustration. I've got your information, and I'm sitting right across from my business chief. I will provide him the information, and we will give you a call tomorrow, and get this get this figured up. Thank you very much for your call. <clears throat> All right, next we have Mike. Uh, yes, uh, good evening, and uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to ask, uh, give information and also ask questions. Uh, my question has to do if the CDC, you know, either changes the rollout or you get on uh, the methodology or you receive additional doses uh, for release. Uh, those, the folks that have uh, appointments already scheduled Will they be contacted to say we have an opportunity to get your shots earlier? This is Tracy Braven. That's a great question. Um, a lot of that is going to depend on how many vaccinations um, we get when we do get more vaccines, how many vaccines we've already been able to give out, and the exact um, nuances of the CDC's recommendations. I would love to say yes, every veteran would get called and, and moved up and we just try and shift everybody's appointments ahead of time. Um, but that, that may be a bigger undertaking um, than it sounds. So the, the, that's the long answer. The short answer is we will certainly do our best um, to make those accommodations and get those people who were either scheduled later, scheduled earlier, and those people who were unable to get scheduled um, scheduled at that time. All right, and unfortunately, this is our last question. However, don't give up on us because you will have an opportunity to leave a message and we will get back to you. So the, the next question goes to Randy. Randy, you're live. Yeah, I, I'm 69 years old, so I don't quite hit the, the first group. Uh, and I had I type two diabetes. I was just wondering when it comes time for that second group to start getting their vaccination, will we uh, be notified or how will we know when to make the appointment? So, so Randy, this is Tracy Brayman. Um, right now, you can call and we will schedule you based on where you fall within those those guidelines. So if you don't meet the criteria for the very first group, we will work on getting you scheduled in the time frame for the second group and so on and so forth down the line. So don't hesitate to call and make an appointment. We will help get you scheduled into the appropriate time frame. And if I could just add on to that just real quick. Uh, you know, we, we had talked about the, the scheduling piece and, and earlier we'd had that question uh, from the gentleman who asked about um, the, the the demand uh, for the doses. So the way that we figured that out, um, 
the, the the CDC has said we we want you to get 90% of of your your 75 pluses before you go to your 65 pluses. So figuring the national average of 70% and taking 90 taking 90% of that 70% doing this wonderful pharmacy math that I I'm learning now. Um we we were able to come up with a date that we were that we could start scheduling that lower age group in. The reason we did that was because we don't want you to have to wait and then we ring the bell and everybody tries to call in and get scheduled at once. We want you to be able to call in one time, get scheduled if you want that vaccine, and then not have to worry about it. Uh, and if we can move you up, uh, if we get more vaccines, then by gosh, we'll give you a call back and we'll move you up in the list. So ju just want you to be clear on that, that we're doing everything we can to make it as comfortable as we possibly can for our veterans. Thanks, Sam. All right, thank you. And hey, Sam. Yes, can I make sir. Final comment. <clears throat> yep. Okay. I'll, I'll close things up and then I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Right. Mr. Roberts. So I wanted to quickly give you the results of the poll. Uh, the poll question that we had: Do you use the computer-based website My Healthy Vet to communicate with your primary care team? Out of the 4,975 people that we had call in, 490 answered yes. 409 asked for more assistance, and 547 said that they don't, uh, they're, they're not interested in using computers. Real quick, I just wanted to let you know, and this kind of goes to our last caller, in order to um, get your name on a list, the phone number, 307-778-7550. If you press one, you're gonna be directed to a phone message line, and that's where we will take your name, your information, and we will hand it to the schedulers. If you press two, you will be sent to scheduling. Now that line is usually pretty full. And then if you press three, you will be um, directed to our transportation program. Again, that phone number is 307-778-7550 and press eight. And with that, we appreciate everyone who called in and Mr. Roberts, I'll turn it over to you for final comments. Hey, thank you all so much. Thank, thanks for the team here for, uh, for answering these questions tonight and putting out really good information. And, and most of all, thank you out, out there, almost 5,000 callers uh, that called in tonight, veterans who've uh, served our country nobly. And it's our privilege and our pleasure to take care of you. Thanks for trusting us uh, for doing this job and uh, thanks for, uh, for working with us as well. Uh, we look forward to another virtual town hall uh, forum as well. We're gonna do several of these throughout the year. Uh, as we as we roll through this uh, vaccination program, and uh, uh, once again, it, it's, it's, as soon as we can get more vaccine in, we're going to make more preparations to get it out. Uh, and if things flow the way I would like them to, our goal here is to vaccinate every single veteran we have by this summer, and we can do it <clears throat> if the vaccine flows. So thank you very much. Have a great evening. And uh, thank you for your service to this country. And that ends our call tonight. Thank you.